The Dallas Stars season is officially over, so it's time to look back on what was a remarkable year for Texas hockey on today's episode. We'll reflect on the hiring of Pete DeBoer and talk about the success that he had as year one head coach. We'll talk about the core that is returning for the team next season, and we'll address any concerns that come at the end of what was a crazy but exciting year. All of this coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked on Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Wednesday, May 31st. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making the Locked on Stars podcast your first listen every single day be sure to subscribe to the show on youtube follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice and be sure to tell a friend about the podcast we will be here throughout the entirety of the off season covering whatever the stars do in the draft trades free agency uh, departures arrivals if anything that the, that the dallas stars do in the off season uh, you better believe that it will be covered right here at locked on stars but this is the first official episode of the 2023 off season. And I want to take some time to reflect uh, and talk about whether or not this was a successful season. And I feel like it was in a lot of ways. So I do want to express that. I know it, at, at times I said, you know, it felt like a Stanley cup finals or bust type of year. So maybe it's not a successful season to the fullest extent, but it also was certainly not a failure of a season, especially given the circumstances coming into the year, knowing especially that the Dallas Stars were going to be led by first-year head coach, or at least first year here in Dallas head coach Pete DeBoer. And despite the bad ending, this was a phenomenal season for the Dallas Stars franchise, one of the best in recent memory. They finished second in the Central Division with 108 points, the first 100-point season in Dallas since the 15-16 season. The Stars boasted a top-five power play and a top-six penalty kill throughout the entirety of the season special teams were a huge factor into why they were so successful they were able to win two playoff series uh, which we haven't seen them do in quite some time uh, you can look back to the bubble run and then the year before uh, I, I guess they didn't win two playoff series but they did win a playoff series against the Nashville Predators and nearly pulled off a second win against the St. Louis Blues but they win two playoff series here in 2023 and the general manager of the team, Jim Nill, is nominated and is a finalist for the General Manager of the Year Award. Plenty to celebrate in terms of a team aspect. From start to finish, this was a very fun and electric Dallas Stars team with plenty of offense, still a very sturdy defense, excellent goaltending. This was a fun product to watch on the ice every single day. Night. There was never a moment where I was watching a game, whether I was at the arena or watching on television at home, that I wasn't excited to see what the team could bring to the table. And if we're being honest with ourselves, not every single fan base had that this season. Several teams did, but there were several teams that didn't have that excitement to look forward to. And so I think that we, as people who watch and root for the Dallas Star success, very, very fortunate that we got to watch an incredibly entertaining and fun team for 82 games plus the additional playoff games that we retreated to uh, over the past month or so. And the team also had plenty of individual accolades to celebrate as well. You have to talk about Jason Robertson, as he not only met or tied Mike Madonna's scoring record, but he absolutely shattered the single-season point record for a Dallas Stars forward with 109 points, 46 goals, 63 assists uh, for the man that they call Robo. His first season on his new contract extension, uh, he's already making a case to get even more money in the future. A phenomenal season, his first All-Star appearance, and again, the first Dallas star to ever score 100 points 
since the franchise was relocated to Texas in 1993. Miro Haskinen also made history on his own on the defensive side of the lineup, breaking Sergei Zuboff's record for the most points scored in a single season by a Dallas Stars defenseman. Haskinen, of course, with 73 points. We also saw Jake Ottinger in the crease step up and prove that he is worthy of being the starting goaltender for the Stars going forward. Especially if you look at the regular season product, we know that we can trust in Jake Ottinger to be the guy for this franchise for the next handful of seasons. And you talk about the the player accolades and the recognition, uh, and we'll dive into some more of these players in the next segment, but really do want to take a second and give praise to Pete DeVore, who I know I dedicated an entire episode to uh, near the end of the season saying I was wrong about Pete DeVore coming into Dallas. I had my doubts. I had my skepticism given how things ended for him in Las Vegas and just given a few things that I had heard uh, from people that have covered some of the teams that he's worked for in the past. Uh, But, I mean, you have to give DeBoer so much credit for the success that the Stars had this season on the ice for handling the team in the way that he did, managing the personnel that he was given. I mean, this is one of the best Dallas Stars coaching debuts, maybe the best. Dallas Stars coaching debut that we've ever seen. You look at some of the more recent coaches. Rick Bonus is a weird scenario because he took the team to the Stanley Cup final in 2020, but that wasn't a full season of him as the head coach. And of course, a lot of other extracurriculars contributing to that as well. But Rick Bonus's first full season as head coach, they missed the playoffs, although a different discussion for a different day, but not entirely his fault. Again, given the hand that he was dealt uh, for that season. Jim Montgomery, the coach before him, his first season, the Dallas Stars had a pretty nice year, made it all the way to the second round of the playoffs where they lost in game seven. Lindy Ruff, a first round exit. So we've seen some coaches come in and their first season, the Stars make the playoffs. They have some success, but they finish near the middle of the division. They sneak in as a wild card team and they don't make it very deep in the playoffs. But it was a breath of fresh air to see a new coach come in and have his team play consistently well throughout the majority of the season, and then get into the playoffs and stay there for a long time and, and, you know, have a nice run where you were the final in the final three teams standing, uh, which is incredibly difficult to do. It's incredibly hard to win playoff games and playoff series, but the Stars were able to do it twice under the leadership of Pete DeBoer and almost nearly pulled off one of the most historic comebacks we've ever seen, just fell two games short of winning that game against the Vegas Golden Knights and winning that series against the Vegas Golden Knights. So Dallas Stars fans should, in my mind, feel pretty encouraged as we haven't seen a coach have this level of success in year one in quite some time. Uh, Of course, there there may be some uh, things to question and maybe be a little bit concerned about, but we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. I want to start off a little bit positive and then leave you guys with a little bit of a question at the end of the show, and I'm sure it's a storyline that we will follow as the offseason progresses and as we slowly make our march toward the start of the next season. But, I mean, if you had told me this time last year when the Dallas Stars hired Pete DeBoer as the head coach that the season would end in Game 6 of the Western Conference Final, I think each and every one of us as Stars fans would have absolutely 100% signed up for that experience. Uh, And now the hope is that this isn't just a, a flash in the pan, um, and that it's something that can be built upon because we haven't seen a Dallas Stars head coach have this good of a start uh, in several, several seasons. And again, we'll dive into a little bit more uh, of what maybe we can expect next later on in the show. But first, we do need to take a minute uh, and talk a little bit about the core that is returning for the Dallas Stars. Another reason for optimism uh, at the end of this season and why Stars fans should be excited. Uh, heading into not just the next season, but for the next several seasons. Uh, We'll dive into the returning players and why we should be excited to watch them continue playing for the Dallas Stars coming up next. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets If your first bet doesn't win, there's no better place to bet all of the playoff action than America's number one sports book. The Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat set to go head to head in the NBA finals. The Nuggets currently the favorite at minus 480 and Nikola Jokic currently the favorite to win finals MVP 
at minus 320. That's who I have winning the series, and that's who I have winning series MVP. But you can do all of the bets for yourself. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. I want to thank you again for making the Locked On Stars podcast your first listen every single day. For all the everydayers out there who make this podcast a part of your daily routine, a sincere and genuine thank you from the bottom of my heart. Even as we press on now into the offseason, what will hopefully be a quick summer, and hopefully we'll have Dallas Stars hockey back in our lives very, very soon. But there's, again, so much to be excited about and so much fun that we had this past season with the Dallas stars. There's another affirming angle of this season, and it's the amount of production that we saw from players who will be wearing victory green sweaters for the next handful of seasons. The aforementioned Jason Robertson is under contract until 2026. And if we're being completely honest with ourselves, he's already making a case for even more money. I know that there were some concerns about his play in the early goings of the postseason, but What we saw in the Western Conference Final, I think, is a little bit more indicative of what we're going to see from Robertson heading forward. I think it was just an unfortunate time for a cold spell for Jason Robertson in that series against the Seattle Kraken and to even some extent the series against the Minnesota Wild. But we know that Jason Robertson is an elite goal scorer. He's proven it two seasons in a row now, and it would not surprise me to see him next season you know, get over or near or over that 50 goal marker. Uh, He was oh so close to doing it this season with 46. But Jason Robertson, after signing his contract extension, it was a long holdout, really waited until the end of the offseason in order to sign that deal. But he made it all worth it. He was such a treat to watch Uh, and certainly uh, has made a case to be, you know, one of the best forwards in the game right now, as has Rope Hintz, who is under contract for the next eight seasons. He signed his extension in the middle of the 22-23 campaign. He scored 37 goals, had 75 points in 73 games. Really, the only concern for Rope Hintz is health at times. Not necessarily long-term health, but we have seen him get banged up every now and then, and he did miss uh, nine games this season, and there were stretches where the Stars certainly were missing his services, and he probably could have had a 40-goal season and maybe even gotten into the 80 or 90 point range had he been able to play the full 82 games like several other players on the roster. But hopefully we'll see Rope Hintz be able to stay healthy a little bit longer during the seasons, but he has been as advertised and in my mind is 100% deserving of the contract that he signed in the middle of the season. An incredibly fun player to watch, and he and Jason Robertson are going to be a, an excellent one-two punch for the next several seasons here in Dallas and not to be forgotten the third member of the best top line in hockey Joe Pavelski is coming back for at least one more season after his fourth best year in terms of points with 77 the ageless wonder a phenomenal playoff series against the Seattle Kraken continuing uh, to be just an absolute threat really from anywhere on the ice but still one of the best in the business in terms of playing in front of the crease tipping those pucks in, and of course, an excellent mentor to some of the young players on the team, uh, some of whom we've already discussed and some of whom we will discuss later on. But you stay on track with the veterans. Jamie Benn, only two more years left on his contract, which is interesting. Uh, Very curious to see what his future with the organization and future just in the NHL uh, will look like as his contract begins to wind down. But what an incredible season from the Dallas Stars captain. 33 goals. Uh, after drawing plenty of criticism in the offseason, and we were all witness to what was known as the Renaissance, uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal year for number 14, bouncing back after not having too many great seasons in Dallas and a lot of people calling into question uh, how much he had left in the tank and whether or not he should be getting big minutes on the team. And he did kind of lose some of the minutes that he would normally would get, but he was finding a way to produce with guys like Wyatt Johnston. Wyatt Johnston is going to be an absolute steal of a player for the next couple of seasons because he's still on his entry-level contract. He will be making under $900,000 for the next two seasons. This is a kid who was 19 years old for the majority of the 22-23 campaign, and he scored 24 goals. In my mind, 100% should have been a Calder Trophy finalist. 
absolutely robbed, if you ask me, one of, if not the best rookie skater in this year's rookie class. The future is incredibly bright for this kid, mentored by Jamie Benn, lived with Joe Pavelski and his family, an incredibly humble player, but also can score goals and was doing it effectively in the regular season and also was making defenses and goaltenders miserable in the playoffs. I know Wyatt Johnston has quickly become a fan favorite, uh, and he is quite literally just getting started. On the defensive side, you have plenty of good players coming back. Miro Haskinen, still under contract for quite some time. All of those questions, could he be the number one defenseman with the departure of John Klingberg? A resounding yes from Miro Haskinen in 22-23, leading the power play on that top unit, just leading the team defensively in general, a record-setting year in terms of points and production. Miro Haskinen going to be very, very good for this hockey club for the next several seasons. And right behind him, you have Thomas Harley, who really wasn't a part of the team until the very end of the season and joined the team in the playoffs, but showed that he is up to the task of being a full-time NHLer. And similar to Wyatt Johnston, uh, this is the final year of his entry-level contract, so the Stars will be getting some excellent production from a young defenseman uh, for less than $1 million a season. And then, of course, he probably will be due for a pretty substantial pay raise if he can continue to play the way that he did in the 23 Stanley Cup playoffs. All of this mixed in with the potential arrival of a few exciting prospects like Logan Stankoven, uh, maybe even Maverick Bork. There's plenty to be excited about it if you are a Dallas Stars fan. And all of those players I just named, as well as a few others, I mean, we saw all of them produce and thrive offensively, defensively this season. Jake Ottinger, uh, you know, his line of work this season, I think, speaks for himself. He's going to be coming back. He's going to get a full offseason to rest and recover. And he now has that experience of being a full-time NHL goalie under his belt. And I think that, that is going to be so beneficial for him moving forward. Scott Wedgwood, of course, coming back to be the backup as well. Really the only big question mark for this team heading into the offseason in terms of retaining a key player, in my mind at least, is Ty Delandria, which I don't really see being a huge issue. He's going to be a restricted free agent this offseason, but... You just have to imagine that the Dallas Stars would like to have him back, and Ty Delandria seems to really like playing here. He has excellent chemistry with several different players on this team, and I just cannot envision a world where the Stars do not look to bring him back. I don't think it'll be some big, drawn-out affair. I expect him to sign some sort of extension this offseason, uh, and there's a few other players that could be departing, but I think the Stars are also going to be looking to add some key pieces to bolster the roster and bolster the lineup a little bit in the offseason. But what's exciting, if you're a fan of this hockey team, is that the main core and the main attraction and the guys that you need on your team are all locked in for the next season. And so there's really no reason to believe that the Dallas Stars cannot run it back and be just as successful, if not even more so, in the 23-24 campaign. And while there's plenty to be excited about, we do have to be realistic and take a step back and wonder, are there any concerns with this team as we now approach the offseason? One of the big questions, is this the peak? Is this as good as life is going to get with Pete DeBoer as the head coach? We'll dive into that question coming up next. The Dallas Stars and new head coach Pete DeBoer had a very successful first season in Dallas. Second place finish in the Central Division. Two playoff series wins, 108 points. But there is a lingering question in the back of my head and maybe some in the back of your heads as well. Is this as good as it's going to get? If you know anything about Pete DeBoer and his history as a head coach, he has a tendency to come into a new city, a new team, a new organization, do very, very well. But things don't necessarily always pan out afterwards. In 2012, DeBoer takes the New Jersey Devils to the Stanley Cup Finals in his first season, and then he never made the playoffs again. With the Devils. In 2016, he loses in the cup final with the San Jose Sharks in his first season there. And then he continued to make the playoffs several years after, but a first round exit the following year, followed by a second round exit, and then a conference finals exit for Pete DeBoer and his San Jose Sharks before he was eventually let go. He moves on to the Vegas Golden Knights, where in two of his three seasons, he makes it to the conference finals and missed the playoffs in his final year. And so you kind of look at his track record and, and you maybe start to get a little bit nervous if you're a Stars fan and you say, well, the Dallas Stars in year one under Pete DeBoer made it to the conference finals. 
So what's coming up next? Well, I personally, I, I mean, I've, I've already apologized on this podcast to Pete DeBoer saying that I was wrong. So I personally don't think uh, that this is the peak for Pete DeBoer with the Dallas Stars. Of course, there is a lot of work that needs to be done on his end as well as the team's end too. But I have a reason to believe and really just spent the last two segments giving the reasons why I believe that this situation could be different. Pete DeBoer obviously has shown that he has the ability to coach and work with the current players in this system. He now just needs to find a way to do that with new players, whether it be prospects that come up, Stan Coven, Bork, or whether it be players that come via draft or via trade, free agency, what have you. Uh, he has to find a way to implement those guys into his system and then also trust that you know Jim Nill, GM uh, finalist for GM of the year, is going to do his part in order to bring him the proper talent and the proper personnel. I, you know, it's a fair question to ask. And of course there's going to be a lot of questions this off season. And especially as the season gets closer, people are going to start to ask, did the Dallas stars peak with Pete DeBoer last season? Or is there more to be seen uh, from the new bench boss and his squad? And I really do think that, that it's going to be the latter. I think that there is more to be seen. And I feel like this was the first step to be taken uh, for Pete DeBoer with this squad. I almost feel like, you know, this year's team uh, was what people thought last year's New York Rangers team was, where they thought the Rangers really kind of, you know, overshot, uh, you know, and really weren't expected to be in the Eastern Conference Finals, but they were expected uh, to be a great team this season, and they were in the regular season. Obviously, their season ended much earlier than they expected, but I think the Stars are similar to that, if not even to a greater degree, given who's in the prospect pool, given how young some of their stars are. New York has really good star players, but some of those guys are a little bit older and maybe the longevity isn't there quite as much as you'd like it to be, whereas you have the stars who a lot of their key players are under 25 years old and they have even more on the way who have high expectations placed upon them. So that's kind of where I'm at with this Dallas Stars team and how I expect things to be going forward. Are there questions and concerns to be addressed this offseason absolutely and I think that's going to be some things that we cover tomorrow uh, we'll dive into some of the questions of what would constitute a successful offseason for the Dallas Stars and I, I think Pete DeBoer has proven uh, that he deserves our trust as people who watch and support this team I think he did a lot of things really well in his first year as head coach was he perfect no but but no head coach is if we're being 100% honest but I think Pete DeBoer has done enough uh, that he has earned our trust for this offseason, and we should be very excited uh, to see what his team has in store and what he has up his sleeve for the following season. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Remember, we are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also find and follow us on social media. Just search Locked on Stars on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, and you can also find me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. Uh, and be sure to let me know in the comment section down below if you're watching on YouTube what your thoughts are on this season. Was this a successful season for the Dallas Stars? And what do you think would constitute a successful offseason for the organization? I'll be looking to read some of those comments as I prepare to do the next episode. But I hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. <laughs>